Hi everyone, the Mature Simmer here. So we're kind of getting close to some daylight, the sun is rising. I figured I could at least start sharing what I was doing here. So getting on, I knew after yesterday when I came in here to pick up the grass that I'd have to come in here and do some work. I had missed the fact that I needed a soil sample but as you can see with my fertilizer spreader sitting there I got my normal indication which is you get out on the field and try to fertilize and nothing comes out of the fertilizer because the fertilizer coupled with the precision farming instruments is like I don't know what to do I don't have soil data it says it exactly that way with that accent um, so I had to go up, grab this. You can see I'm now on my 45th or 44th. I'm not sure if it counts it. Probably counts it when I hit the button, I think. But I think I'll be able to do this in less than 50. But it's going to be uh, quite a few, as always. But obviously the result we get on the back end is way better. So I have to lime and fertilize. I'm probably just going to go ahead and get the lime done once I get the sampling done because that will allow time to pass while I drive up and get the spreader rather than just having to sit around here and twiddle my thumbs until the lab results come back before I can do anything. So I'm just trying to be as uh, efficient as possible so that I only take the number of samples I need. I'm not super super concerned about that because you know I've got enough money I'd rather do it right than save you know three hundred dollars because the samples are like a hundred and fifty a piece so it's like if I need to take one or two more because of a little bit of, of differences. So the question here is always like, can I get the whole thing? Yeah, that should be pretty easy. So there we go. I think at 49. So we almost did hit 50, even though I was pretty sure that was not going to happen. So we're going to send the soil samples for analysis. So there they go. We're going to see them. They've been sent, and we'll see the results soon. And so I can go ahead here. Well, I guess I can head back and we'll sell it. I I don't know that I need to keep on with it and hold on to it until the results come back, but I just kind of do because it's just cleaner that way. So you can see the FM on field 38. This is still staying dormant the one time a couple, might be even two, three years ago at this point, that I ran into the field by accident doing some of my work is still there. Um, there's some fields up here that I drifted off the road of at, at one point and drove through and killed the crop. The crop never got harvested. Obviously by now it will have been withered. So just not sure who is active at this point in generational farming. So there was a little bit where I had peeked away at something else while I was going down the road. Off to the left there, uh, that cedar and tractor have been sitting there for years, so this field was worked pretty adamantly. I think it might be the same person who has field 38 down there, so not surprising that there's a bit of just uh, common neglect going on there. And obviously people will choose to do what they can do. Uh, you know, real life may have intruded. Sometimes it does so brusquely and without warning. And so someone may have been, yeah, I'll buy all these fields, I'll do whatever. And then suddenly the world fell in around them with something that pulled them away. And they just haven't even been able to return to do anything. So certainly don't wish that on anybody but in a competition it does make things simpler in some cases because then we end up basically competing against a smaller and smaller group of people that are continuous and even those of us that have 
challenges where we can't do things consistently, you know, because we're still working, we're doing whatever. I don't know that there's anybody on here that I've heard as a, someone who's retired entirely and could just do whatever they wanted and spend all their time. And even if someone is retired, you're likely going to have other interests outside of Farming Simulator, uh, you know, or even like what I have where I, I do other things in Farming Simulator. So this is not going to be 100% of my Farming Simulator time. So I had driven up here in the meantime, filled up my gas tank, hence the good fuel result that pulled me down. We're going to get below 2.6 million once our samples are available. So that will drop down. Uh, if they're not available, I'm going to cut away by the time I get back here and get the lime spreader. And then, uh, you know, we'll join up either way. You're not going to have to watch me come all the way back. But I'm going to kind of sit here and wait until the samples come in, and then we'll rent the spreader. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, got my first load of lime here. So it's about, I think, 7,500 or so for the samples to get done. And then obviously had to lease the spreader, and we've put... 3,000 liters of lime in there, and now we're gonna get moving. So here we go. So it's always a bit challenging figuring out exactly where to go along the edges here. Can't really see but obviously that row is fine, but then I'm going to have to pay attention when we get over to the left of me here. And this is, we're heading north, so to the west uh, side of the field or toward the center where we line up our GPS track there, and then we'll see how everything plays out here. But I always like to kind of run the edge, so at least I have a border here. And then we'll take care of things up there. So it's going to take a little bit of time. It doesn't take terribly long. It's well under an hour for the most part to get everything done that I need to get done. Now this may take a little bit more lime, perhaps. And I realize I mispronounced that poorly. But just uh, other things that were going on but it may do that because we had the unexpected additional harvest where normally I would have come in and done fertilizing and liming so I might have a similar position in fertilizing where we extracted a little bit more of the resource out of the soil than is typical when I normally come in and do things because we were not able to fertilize or lime before we harvested the grass yet again so let's see i'll probably run something up here at the top i was debating if i wanted to worry about that but it's probably a good idea to do it so you can kind of see where we've gone over before but um you know our field kind of butts up right against the next one that's just the nature of this map and so I'm just trying to make sure I connect up to the green. So there you can see, the good news is, you know, we're down here enough. Now it should slow down, which it did. But we're down here enough that we can now see where the lime or the, the growth is because we have one more day, which is, again, why we can do this today. Today is the forage day where we would have normally, in the past, uh, before I changed my methods, been mowing. Because uh, we were basically mowing every other day and getting four cuttings done in a year. But what I determined uh, through kind of a chance happening where I had gone on vacation at the end of March and therefore had to leave the crop alone, leave the field alone. That year, 
I determined with the amount of material I got off the field, letting it grow a four... Uh, I cannot enunciate today, where I had let it go a full four days instead of three days. So uh, you, go, you go beyond the f harvest or the forage state to get to ready to harvest in any crop. The day before harvest is always your forage day where you could turn things into forage and you're allowed to actually work on the crop that way in that mechanism. But I had seen the amount I got off that day when I had left that and was frankly amazed to see that in essence it was a 33% higher yield than what I had gotten off the field prior to that waiting just to the forage day. So at that point I made the determination uh, just because I know how to do math and I figured it out and was like, well, I could eliminate one entire cycle and get basically the same yield out of this field. So why would I want to put extra fertilizer down, put extra lime down, do extra sampling, just, you know, do a lot of extra stuff? Why would I want to do any of that if I did not need to? Um... All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just go here. I'm not sure that it's going to give me a lot, but I think there's a little bit of the field that is going to need some lime, which is kind of unfortunate because lime does a terrible job of not spreading. It has turned itself off, so actually it, it worked out well. But I'm going to go a little further until clearly the lime line that I left underneath, which I think is still a bit over, um, shows up and matches up. And then I'll go up and turn around. But yeah, the ability to drop down to one less harvest basically saves me more expense. And so, once again, with the goal of generational farming being the almighty dollar and how many of them we make, which is, for all intents and purposes, when you get down to it, the goal of any endeavor of a agricultural nature, um, you know, people can say what they will about, I do it because I love it, I love the land, I love the, you know, animals, let's say, um, but in the end, if they're not making money, they can only do that for so long, because then that's not a business, that's a charity. And, um, you know, you may be taking care of the land, you may be doing everything you can to get a good outcome, but in the end, uh, without money to buy lime, fertilizer, fuel, everything else you need, um, you can't keep doing things. There's no such thing as a free lunch. So, yeah, if you've uh, ever watched the series Yellowstone, a uh, fan of that, and we actually had been way, way behind, but we recently finished and have caught up. So we are through the Season 5 finale that showed up at the start of 2023, and... We've kind of seen it all, but really that ranch is running into that exact struggle. I mean, you look at that land, you look at that what they've got, you look at the house they have on that land and so forth, and think these people must be rolling in money. And you find out, you know, and again, the, the way they live, the things they do, it, it kind of reinforces that for a large portion of the seasons. But uh, as we've gotten into Season 5, the true finances of the operation kind of come into view, uh, especially when you get to a point where there's some you know, a virus that spreads among buffalo that appears in the fields, and suddenly they're making the hard choice of, do we need to kill the whole herd? Because if one of their cattle comes down with it, the USDA's process is, yeah, the whole herd has to be destroyed because otherwise you could suddenly have an infestation 
all over the place that, that would decimate the industry. Um, but, you know, or, or do they send it somewhere? But if you send it somewhere, because again, it's a business, um, people have land. If you want to use their land, you can. Uh, just like if you want to use their home, you can. But you're paying them a lease or rent. And you're doing that. And, uh, you know, it turned out for the 50,000 acres or whatever they would need um, for the head of cattle that they had, that would cost them $1.4 million a month to lease that land. And uh, you're not making that much on just selling the cattle. And so there's been a little bit of those type of discussions going on at the tail end. Season's ended. You know, we'll see how things go. Um, I've heard the next season has been canceled, but then I heard there's like, it, this is, this show has become kind of the, we got a fall section of the season and a spring section of the season. So I guess the second half of the season is coming back in November, and so there will be some number of episodes that I assume will wrap this thing up since the network that owns it now has announced they're canceling season six and it sounds like I think they're trying to cancel it because they're basically trying to start up a new show based on that and so I think they're just like you know what this is a good point uh, you know and I'm sure it's to some degree a little bit like the same thing we would have on YouTube channels um, at some point there's like it or not even though I tell everybody here, like, you can jump in at any point. This is not Yellowstone. This is not an ongoing saga where if you don't know the characters and you don't know whatever, like, you're going to be lost. Um, but invariably, I am guessing that there is some group of people that see the pop-ups from my channel come up in their suggested videos and see things like episode 74 and episode... 50 and episode 240 soon to be in my main FSN series and say oh my goodness I can't devote that much of my life to try to catch up and I can't you know I'm sure I'll be lost if I join uh, certainly on narrative shows like that uh, you know when you've got five seasons you probably gain less and less viewers as things go along because someone who's really into it and wants to know how we got here um, isn't necessarily in that type of a, a medium willing to just have someone give them a two-minute summary at the start of an episode and just say, you know, we're doing generational farming and we're moving around and... Um, from map to map and we're doing this and we're doing that like that there's more there and if they really enjoy the show um you know it, there's just this want like a good book or anything like that of hey i want to go ahead and i'm confused oh i'm over here so somewhere up here it stopped i think it's up there um so, I'm guessing that's what's going on there, is they've just said, you know what, rather than go to a season six where someone who's never seen the show is going to be like, I don't want to watch 50 episodes to kind of catch up. This looks like a great show, whatever, but if they start something new, um, it makes it a little bit easier for people to feel like they could jump in, because if they then want to fill in the gaps it's a different mental exercise to say, yeah, I want to know the history of this family, so now I'm going to go watch the five seasons of Yellowstone because I really love this story and I want to know more. I mean, certainly that's the way I feel about the other spin-offs. I haven't seen any of them, 1883 or 1923. Um, they look interesting. Uh, I just haven't gotten to them yet, but I don't feel I've missed a lot by not having gotten into them either. Uh, you know, the, the show's self-contained, but people don't necessarily feel that. Ooh, I was trying, but my GPS was not cooperating. So, let's turn this back on. Because, you know, we'll be able to do what we need to here. 
at this point. It's just... Oh, come on. Go. I love the cruise control not working. Hit the pedals, do whatever. But, um... So, yeah. I only bring up Yellowstone again from the standpoint of... You know, you, you gotta do things to make money on a farm or the farm just can't survive. It's just how it goes. So, um, I am going to go ahead and finish the lime. I am going to then jump in and fertilize the field, and then I am done. Uh, the weather should not matter in these cases, as far as the rain that you can see coming in there. Um, I don't think we're going to have any kind of a problem with that, doing what we're doing. But then I'll be back tomorrow to uh, go ahead, well, sometime. It'll probably be tomorrow. Actually, it won't be tomorrow, because, yeah, that's actually part of my challenge, now that I think about it. Yeah, I do have... I'm tied up all day tomorrow. Um... So this actually works out well because I can delay another day when I have some more likely time available. But whenever I'm back, i got to mow this one more time and then we're going to let it sit until the spring with the goal once again of starting at the top and getting a full three cycles where they're truly f three full cycles. The revamp jump we had to do delayed our ability to get in and um, kind of started us out in May again, which was what I was trying to avoid. Uh, hoping I'm not going to hit that fertilizer spreader. I might clip it with one of my arms, but uh, actually we might just get by. Perfect. So... I couldn't have planned putting that down. Let's just pretend I did, though. Like, yeah, I went and measured and knew exactly how I could have that exciting effect happen on the end of this video for those who have stuck around. So that's your, uh, your special gift for getting all the way to the end here. So I thank you if you've done that. Hope to see you back, and I will see you next time.